Hey, friends, this is Dr. Keenan Bridges, and I want to welcome you to our Supernatural School of Ministry Breakthrough Initiative. In this very powerful masterclass, you're going to learn keys and secrets that will transform your life, your ministry, and your destiny. Specifically, we're going to teach you how to, number one, break demonic strongholds in your life and finances. We're going to teach you how to develop a supernatural culture in your business or your ministry. We're going to teach you how to unlock your destiny to see acceleration in your purpose and your calling. And lastly, we're going to teach you how to really activate supernatural faith for miracles, signs, and wonders. You don't want to go anywhere. We'll be right back in this very powerful masterclass. Hey, friends, I'm so excited that you've joined us for our Supernatural School of Ministry Breakthrough Initiative. The reason why I put this together is because many people all over the world are asking very important questions. How do I experience breakthrough? You know, breakthrough simply means to break through. It means to be able to overcome or to push past the limitations, the hindrances, the walls that are before you. And I'm reminded of Tamar in the book of Genesis, chapter 38. You remember her. She's the one that was pregnant with twins, the one who was a single mom, shamed, embarrassed, and ostracized. And the Bible says that when she gave birth to her sons, her twins, that the first child broke out first. And the midwife said, how did you break through? You know, I believe that people are going to ask you that question after this masterclass. They're going to say, how did you break through? I thought you were bound. I thought you were bruised. I thought you could never overcome the difficulties that lie before you, but you're going to break through, and I'm going to teach you how. So when we talk about breakthrough, number one, we have to understand that you are not alone. Millions of people all over the world are stuck. They're in stagnation. They're in a, a, a state of, you know, complacency, despair, despondency, whatever the case may be. But I want to show you some things that will help you to overcome. So the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, it says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. In other words, many people have what I call strongholds. A stronghold is a fortress. You know, in military terms, a stronghold is where the enemy resides, is where the enemy builds a high ground from where he can attack you. And where he has the higher ground, he has the advantage. And so one of the keys in warfare is to tear down the strongholds. Because when you tear down the stronghold, you disempower the enemy. Now, we're not talking about World War I, World War II. We're talking about World War Me. And the reality is many of us have strongholds in our lives, in our minds, that are demonic. You may have never thought about it that way. You may have thought, well, this is just the way I am. This is, this is how I am. This is how I grew up. This is what my mom said about me. This is what my dad said about me. But you don't realize that these are actually demonic fortresses that have erected themselves in your lives to keep you in a state of bondage. For example, many people have a stronghold of rejection. They never feel good enough. They never feel like, you know, they're really successful. They never feel accomplished. They don't feel like people love them. And as a result, this stronghold of rejection keeps them from receiving the love of God, and it keeps them from intimate relationships because the reality is we can't go anywhere without relationship. Relationship is important, but if there are demonic strongholds of rejection in your life, you will not be able to see the fruit of God-ordained relationships. Some people have a stronghold of addiction in their lives. They can't overcome the vices, the compulsions, you know, things that they're addicted to, alcohol, sex, drugs, fame. Some people are addicted to food. You know, I, I believe that the Lord has delivered me from a Dunkin' Donut spirit. I had it for many, many years. What I don't want to be delivered from is a Chick-fil-A spirit because that's God. That's God's holy house. That's his anointed place of worship. So I don't want to get rid of that. But I do believe that many people are bound and God wants to liberate you. 
The Bible says in John chapter 8, verse 32, it says, if you continue in my word, you will be my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Every area of bondage in a believer's life is connected to a lie they have believed. Let me say that one more time. Every area of bondage in a believer's life is connected to and empowered by a lie they have believed. The key to breaking the bondage is breaking the lie. It's coming out of agreement with the lie. You see, I want you to think about it like this. Imagine a stronghold is a fortress that's built with bricks, right? Each brick is a different lie. Each brick is a different thing that you believe that is totally contrary to the word of God. And the more lies you believe, the stronger the stronghold. Now I want you to see the opposite. Jesus said that, Father, sanctify them through your truth. My word is truth, or thy word is truth. So the word of God is truth. So think about this. The word of God is the demolition machine. It is the battering ram that breaks strongholds. Because as people begin to fall out of agreement with the lies, and they fall into agreement with the word of God, the strongholds in their lives begin to come down brick by brick. You know, maybe you were abandoned. Maybe you grew up in a home where they were ex extremely critical. And so you have a stronghold of performance or perfectionism. Everything has to be perfect because when you grew up, you were always criticized about every little thing. Why did you do this? Why did you clean your room like this? Why did you put the dishes here? And so now you're terrified of getting anything wrong. That's a stronghold. And God says this to you, you are loved, you are accepted, hear this, and his love is unconditional. It's not based on your performance. It's not based on your works of righteousness, but it's based on his goodness. You see, these are the things that begin to shatter the demonic powers in our lives. You know, I've talked about many times, I even talked about it in my book, Kingdom Authority, the four areas or the four strategies that the enemy uses to bring us in bondage. Number one is temptation. It's the age, the age old strategy to tempt. He tempted Eve in the garden of Eden. She was tempted by the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And I believe that tree wasn't an apple tree. I believe it was either a mango tree or maybe a papaya tree. I think there was somewhere in the islands. I don't have any evidence for this. Don't write me about it, but that's just what I want to believe about it. That was a joke, by the way. But I want you to understand that temptation means that, that the enemy is seeking to draw you into sin. Temptation is the enticement to sin. This is his number one strategy. Now, if the devil can't entice you into sin, what he wants you to do, his second strategy is to deceive. What do I mean by deception? Deception is to believe a lie, to believe something that is not true. Now, if the devil can't get you to be deceived, he'll go for his third and very effective arsenal, distraction. If he can distract you, what's distraction? Distraction means that I cause you to not focus on what you need to be focused on and to focus on something else. And as long as you're focused on something else, you can't focus on what you should be focused on. It's an age old uh, game. You know, in warfare, you would create a diversion. You know, you create a distraction so that the enemy, the, the enemy assailant or the enemy combatant would be distracted from your real plans. And the enemy does this all the time. He creates smoke screens in our lives. Some phone calls are a distraction. Some relationships are a distraction. There are some people who have been anointed to waste your time, and they've been sent on an assignment from the enemy to distract you from the assignment that God has for you. That's called distraction. And if he can't tempt you, if he can't deceive you, and he can't distract you, his fourth and very effective arsenal is to oppress you. And oppression means that the enemy causes so much affliction and so much attack in your life that you want to give up on what God has told you. 
Maybe God has given you a word. He says, you know, by this time next year, you're going to come out of debt. You're going to come out of bondage. You're going to come out of that difficulty. And guess what happens? The exact opposite happens. You know, God says, you're going to be married by this time next year. And you're saying, I'm excited. And instead of Boaz, you keep finding Bozo. And so this is the enemy's plan to get you to be so frustrated that you won't believe what God says about you. That's called oppression. Some of you, even who are watching, you've been oppressed in your sleep. You've been oppressed in your emotions. You've been oppressed in your mind through negative thoughts, thoughts of fear, anxiety, thoughts of worry, thoughts of frustration. And this is the demonic oppression of the enemy. You see, oftentimes we think about demons. We think about little things running around, little creatures with horns and little tail. We think of devil as a, a guy in a red jumpsuit with horns and spandex. That's not the devil, and that's not demons. Demons actually operate in your thought life. The battlefield of spiritual warfare is your mind. And these demons come, and they tell you things that, are not, that aren't true. They tell you, you're not going to be successful. You're going to be alone for the rest of your life. Nobody really cares about you. It's just you against the world. And they tell you all of these lies, and they put so much pressure on you that you begin to concede and come under the weight of their attacks. You see, you have to understand something that's very, very important. The Word of God is a weapon. You know, the Bible says in Ephesians, the sixth chapter, it says that the sword of the spirit is the word of God. Hebrews chapter four says, for the word of God is alive, it's active, it's quick, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces, it divides asunder soul and spirit. So the first thing we have to understand, the first key to breaking demonic strongholds is believing and speaking and agreeing with the word of God. Believing and speaking and agreeing with the word of God. You see, the word of God is powerful. The Bible says in Matthew, I believe it's the eighth chapter, it says that Jesus, he came into a town and it says that people had come from all over. And the Bible says that he cast out spirits with his word. He spoke the word of God and demonic powers began to break. Why? Because the word of God is a battering ram against the lies of the enemy. And when Jesus spoke the word, people began to get set free. It says in Psalm 107, he sent his word and he healed them and he delivered them from their destruction. You see, the word of God is powerful. We must fall into agreement with the word of God. We must agree with God's word and we must speak God's word accordingly. The second thing is that we have to be mindful of the things that we are listening to. You see, the truth of the matter is that your eye gates and your ear gates are windows. They are entryways. What are you listening to? What are you, what are you watching? Who, who are you talking to? You know, what influences are you embracing in your life? You know, if, you, if, you're, if you're trying to be a married woman, for example, you can't watch, uh, you know, every rerun of Golden Girls. You know, you can't be watching Golden Girls for 16 hours a day. You know, it's going to undermine what you want. And I know that's a trivial example, but some of us watch things that are, that are filled with bitterness, lust, perversion, negativity, and we're getting these things into our spirit. And so if you want to break free from the power of the enemy, you have to learn how to make sure, listen to me, that you are imbibing and inculcating the things of God. You know, Paul wrote to us in Philippians, he said, what things soever are true, are good, are lovely, are of a good report, think on these things. Let me put it another way for you. Your meditation is your medication. Your meditation is your medication. What you meditate on, you medicate on. What do I mean by that? You know, the, the, the ancient Hebrew tradition or the ancient Hebrew practice called meditation, I'm not talking about Eastern meditation. I'm not talking about going to Timbuktu, going to the mountains of Tibet and sitting there and shaving your head ball and, and getting in a, you know, in a, in a kangaroo position. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about meditation in a biblical sense. 
which is the ancient Jewish tradition, the ancient Hebrew tradition called Haggah. And Haggah means to say something over and over again. It means to speak under your breath. Have you ever done this before? Yeah, you have. You've done it before. You know, you've been in traffic and somebody cut you off and you said, rrr, 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 rrr. You're, you're muttering, you're, you're moaning, you're, you're, you're speaking under your breath or your supervisor says something on the job that, that gets you upset. And you say, you know what? I just can't believe they would say this to me. I mean, it's just like, they don't even know my worth. They don't know my value. You know, I, I'm educated. I got a degree. I, you know, I just, I just, I just, I just, and you go on and on and on. Then you go home after five o'clock, you know, I just can't believe they would just say this to me. That's just, it's really good. And you go home, 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 you go home. And then now you're in the bed looking up at the sky. I just can't believe you're meditating. That is meditation. That is speaking something over and over and over again. And what happens when you do that over time, it gets into your spirit. It gets into your heart. It becomes a part of you. Well, what if the opposite were true? What if I meditated on the word of God? For example, instead of complaining about my boss and my job, I say, you know what? I'm more than a conqueror. I really am more than a conqueror. Yeah, I'm, I'm more than a conqueror. I just think about it. I'm more than a conqueror through him that loved me. Jesus has been good to me. You know, God has been faithful in my life. And I just you know, I just think about the goodness of God. And then you go to go, get off the job, you know, get off of work. And I just think I just think about the goodness of God. He's just really, you know, God's really a good God. And you go home, you, you, you open your eyes and look up at the ceiling. And I just think God is really, really good. You're meditating on the goodness of God. And guess what happens? It becomes a part of you. And those demonic fortresses become disintegrated, become dismantled. They begin to break. You know, you're watching me today and you're saying, Pastor, I hear you. I, I, I know what you mean, but I, I'm finding it hard. Of course you are. That's what teaching like this is for. That's what the word of God is for. You see, his word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. You have to realize that when the word of God comes into a dark place, it lights it up. And the Bible says in John chapter one, the light shines in darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. I declare to you that the strongholds, the bondage, the fear, the anxiety that you have been experiencing in your life, that thing keeping you out of God's best for you, keeping you out of the plan and purpose of God for your life, that thing's about to break because it's time for you to reach your fullest potential. It's time for you to experience what God has for you. It's time for you to become everything that God intends. Are you ready for it? Are you ready for what God has for you? You see, beloved, the truth is this. The truth is there is an enemy, and he is a liar. He is not honest. He is not reliable. He is not dependable. He is nefarious. He is diabolical. He is insidious. And his whole assignment is to still kill and destroy God's plans for your life. Give him no place. You see, when we understand that there is God's responsibility, what he's done for us, and then there is our responsibility, what we're going to do in response to him. And when you understand that God will never do for you what he's called you to do, and you can never do for God what he alone can do, your responsibility is to receive the word of God is to come into agreement with the word of God, is to speak God's word. And I want you to just do this now as a practical exercise. And I just want you to just, you know, just kind of touch your, your head or like you're, like you're just laying hands on your head. And I want you to just say this, I have the mind of Christ. I want you to say every lie that I've believed that goes against the word of God, I fall out of agreement with that lie. The lie that I don't have enough the lie that I'll never succeed, the lie that I'll be sick for the rest of my life, that's a lie. And we break those strongholds now in the name of Jesus, those things holding you in captivity. Some of you, it's become so deeply entrenched that it's a part of your personality now. You're saying, well, this is just, just the way I am. <clears throat> 
I just, I just, I can't help it. This is just who I am. And I, I've been this way for 89 years. Well, you know, it's time to change. It's time to change. You see, what, whatever doesn't challenge you won't change you. And today I'm challenging you and I'm saying to you, it is time to break those strongholds. For many years, I had a stronghold of fear and a stronghold of rejection like you wouldn't believe. I was so afraid. I was afraid to fail. I was afraid to be judged. I was afraid to be criticized. I was afraid that people would use my mistakes and my past against me. I had so many fears and I realized something very profound. What you fear, you facilitate. If you don't believe me, ask Job. He says, the thing I greatly feared has come upon me. And I'm telling you, many of you are facilitating your fears. You know, I, I, just, I just pray I'll never, I'll, I'll never go through this, and I'll never go through this, and I'll never go through that. And, and the more you do that, that is the dinner bell for demons. You see, Satan is fed by your fears. He loves it. It energizes him. And he's like, oh, yes. They're afraid they're going to get a divorce. Let me attack that marriage right now. Oh, yes, they're afraid they're going to get cancer. Let me give them the prognosis now. But I submit to you, beloved, that the devil is a liar. He's always been a liar, and he always will be a liar. Today is the day for you to break the shackles of shame, of guilt, of fear, of condemnation, so that you can live the life that God has called you to live. Now is the time to break the bondage in your life. Now is the time to experience what God has for you. Listen, I don't want you to go anywhere. We have much more information for you in this very special masterclass. We'll be right back. Greetings, friends. This is Dr. Keenan Bridges, and I want to tell you about my latest book, Unlocking the Code, of the supernatural, the secret to God's power in you. What if I told you that in you is a deep secret that many believers have yet to explore that holds the key to unlocking the supernatural in your daily lives? What if I told you that your spiritual DNA is charged with the fullness of heaven? Let me tell you something. Many all over the world are asking the question, is there more to my spiritual life? Is there more to my relationship with God? Can I live in the supernatural every day? And the answer to that question is yes. In your spiritual DNA is the secret to a radical transformation of your life and destiny. In this book, you're going to learn the keys on how to unlock the code of the supernatural, how to live in the miraculous every single day, how to engage the courts of heaven to see the power of God manifest in your lives and the lives of your family members, and how to know your identity in Christ, which is the key to you living a sustained culture of miracles in every area of your life. I'm telling you, this has changed the lives of millions of people and is the basis of everything that God is speaking in this hour. This is one of the most important messages that I have ever released to the body of Christ. And I'm going to share things with you in this book that I've never shared in any other resources that I've written. And I'm telling you, this is a very, very, very powerful and impactful message. Very easy to read, but it's going to transform your life. Unlocking the code of the supernatural, the secret to releasing God's power in you. You can get this book anywhere books are sold. Don't miss out, beloved. Now is your time. Friends, I'm so glad that you're staying with us on this Supernatural Masterclass for our Supernatural School of Ministry, and I call it our Breakthrough Initiative because many of you have prayed about, asked about, how do I break through? And I believe that the question is going to be flipped in many ways. The question is not going to be, how do I break through? People are going to ask you, how did you break through? And I believe now is your moment. Earlier, we talked about breaking demonic strongholds, and the importance of, of really getting in the Word of God, meditating, meditating on the Word of God, meditating on the Word of God, and speaking the Word of God to see our lives change and transform. But I want to just take a few moments to talk about developing a supernatural culture. You know, I travel all over the world preaching the gospel, and in my travels, I've seen so many things, but the question remains. People want to know can I, not my pastor, 
not the priest or the pope or the bishop, but can I experience the supernatural in my life? And the answer is yes. But there's some things that we have to do in order for that to be a reality. We have to learn how to develop a supernatural culture. Now, when I say culture, what are we talking about? You know, culture is really a mindset that affects your habits, your customs, and your worldview. Really, the two things that separate people are language and culture. So when we come into the kingdom of God, in order to flow and operate in the kingdom, we have to embrace a new culture. Well, the scripture says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, it says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You know, that's literally translated his right way of doing things. In other words, when we come to God, when we enter into the kingdom, we have to embrace his way of doing things. The problem we have is that we already have a way of doing things. You know, we were, we were taught when we were coming up, you know, maybe your ethnic community, maybe your nationality, maybe your particular region in the country or, you know, magistrate that you live has a specific culture. For example, one of the things that really changed my life, I was one of the first African Americans in my city to be a member of the Chinese Chamber of Commerce. Now, I always knew my eyes were a little different, but I didn't realize I had such a deep heritage. And that's a joke. Don't be offended by what I just said. But I was, I was literally a member of the Chinese Chamber of Commerce, and I had an opportunity to see a different way of doing things. And when you see a different way of doing things, it causes you to examine your way of doing things. Now, hear me. Just because it's your culture... I mean, your indigenous culture, your, your culture that is germane to you doesn't make it right. A lot of people say, well, but that's my culture. Well, there's a lot of sinful cultures. You know, back in the day, human sacrifice was a part of culture. You know, female mutilation was a part of culture. That doesn't mean it's right. There are sinful cultures, but there are righteous cultures. And so we have to make sure that we are doing things in accordance with God's will. Now, hear me very carefully. If you're going to see the supernatural in your life, you have to change your culture. You have to develop a culture that is accommodating, that supports the supernatural. You have to develop a way of doing things that is in alignment with the word of God. Now, how do we do that? Very quickly. Romans 12 says, don't be conformed to this world, but be trans." Form. That means go through a metamorphosis by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We have to be transformed. We have to have on a different mindset. You know, every time I travel to different countries, I'll notice that they have a different culture. You know, this is how we do it here. You know, you can't go to, you know, let's say Southeast Asia and, and you know, you're trying to give everybody fist bumps because they don't do that there. They may bow, they may have a different way of greeting. So you have to understand the culture. In the same way, when we become believers, we have to begin to understand the way the kingdom operates. And one of the things is that we have to understand is that the kingdom of God functions by revelation, not by works, not by effort, but by revelation. The more that is revealed to you, the more of the kingdom you will experience. In other words, revelation is an invitation into more. Every time God reveals something to you, he is inviting you to experience what he has revealed to you. So we're going to talk about more of this in a little bit, but I want you to understand you have to develop a supernatural culture. So I want to just pray with you real quick now, because you got to get this in your spirit. I want you to know that God has a plan for you to not only operate in the supernatural, but to equip others to do the same. So I want us to pray right now. Father, I thank you for those watching. I thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit on their lives and on our lives. And I thank you, Lord, that we are, we are transformed by the renewing of our mind, that we may, we may prove what is the good and acceptable will of God for our lives, the good, the acceptable, and the perfect will of God for our lives. And today we make a conscious decision. If there's something in our culture, 
and our way of doing things that goes against your way of doing things, we put it down. We lay it down. We surrender it. We turn it over to you. We want to be your children, and we want to function like you. We want signs, wonders, and miracles to become a habit, to become natural. We want to operate in your will. We thank you for this now. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you pray that prayer, it's really simple. Ask God to begin to deal with you on his way of doing things. In other words, I want you to begin to expect miracles every day. Expect signs and wonders every day. Expect the supernatural every day, which is a major key. Expectancy, because the attitude of expectancy creates the atmosphere for miracles. Listen, don't go anywhere. We have a lot more to give you. We'll be right back after this brief intermission. God bless you. All over the world, people are crying out for an encounter with God. From every nation of the earth, every kindred, every tribe, people all over the world wants to know if the God of the Bible is alive. God bless you, beloved. This is Dr. Keenan Bridges. And at Keenan Bridges Ministries and Grace and Peace Global Fellowship, we are committed, we are totally devoted to seeing the nations equipped with the supernatural power of God. We've seen the blind see, we've seen the deaf hear, the dead raise, and those who have been afflicted by demonic powers set free by the power of the Holy Spirit. Many of you watching me today have said, Pastor, I want to learn more about the supernatural. I want to be a part of this great move of God. And I want to thank you from all over the world and thank you those watching for partnering with us and joining us in our mission to liberate the captive to restore the broken, and to equip God's people to operate in his supernatural power so that, so that they can release the kingdom of God to the ends of the earth. Would you join us? Would you be a part of that initiative? As we see souls saved, people come into the power and presence of God. People begin to fulfill their destinies all over the earth. We encourage you today. Would you consider supporting us? Visit our website, Kingdom Bridges. Dot com. Also, you can go to bit.ly forward slash sow a seed to partner with us to see the nations transformed by the power and presence of God. Be a part of the harvest. Be a part of the mission. God bless you, beloved. I want to tell you.